This is Everyday Spirituality from Connect.Faith, a podcast where we talk to people from all walks of life about the intersection of creativity, spirituality, and justice, and their everyday spiritual practices. I'm Caitlin Westervelt, and I'm here with Susanna and Victor Corona. It's always incredible to hear the stories about what the two of you do for the recent immigrant community around here in Westchester County. Because of our own experience with the legal system, trying to become uh, first uh, legal residents and then citizens, we were able to travel the whole system. So when people approach us, uh, we try to give them advice. They uh, maybe don't go to this lawyer or you do this, get ready for this paperwork or don't do this. The way I see it is like we're more connecting people to services. Mm-hmm. Like if they need a good lawyer, we have like many names. Mm-hmm. If they need transportation, we have people from the church that wants to give that service and provide a different type of services, not only transportation, but some of them even offer like babysitter Mm -hmm. or um, uh, tutoring for some of them that are behind on some uh, subjects on school. And um, very much that's how I see it. Like for us, it's like connecting, connecting. Uh, services with people and and people to people. Yeah, people very well. It's very important. When we came to this church, uh, we felt like uh, this church was uh, not only nurturing the spiritual um, paths of people, the journeys of people individually, but uh, also as a as a congregation, we felt a, a whole community not only uh, praying or singing beautiful music. I was impressed by the music, though. <laughs> but uh, yes. um, not only praying or singing, but they were also in action, doing things. Uh, so I was impressed by the idea of uh, social justice and not only, like I said, again, not only praying, but uh, working in the field, doing something. So that reminded me of my previous work in, in White Plains. Is there anything that you brought with you here from White Plains or what made you start doing that? Um, and what work did you do there? Um, I was... Uh, directing the Spanish choir um, for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And the choir was not only in charge of singing. We had uh, all kinds of celebrations with the uh, following the traditions that we uh, brought from Mexico, mainly from Mexico, but we had people from Guatemala, from Mm -hmm. Peru, from other uh, places. So, for example, if we start with the with the um, uh, calendar year, we celebrate uh, the three kings, mm-hmm. the Los Reyes Magos. Mm-hmm. So we had uh, people dress up like kings and bring, uh, bring in the big auditorium uh, real toys for the children. And there were lines of, uh, mm-hmm. you know, because, and for that we asked donations to all the community. And then we follow with the next celebration, uh, let's say, uh, um, February 2nd, uh, the Candelaria, mm-hmm. and it's uh, again bring all the baby Jesus dressed up to the church. Another tradition, and tamales. It was a big cel- <laughs> I mean, tamales go with that celebration, <laughs> and then we keep uh, something that we started there was something very uh, meaningful for me. Uh, around those years, um, well, uh, in March, it was when uh, all the uh, laborers, the workers uh, at, in construction, landscaping, uh, came back from all the places to cross the border and, mm-hmm. and everything. So in uh, St. Joseph's Day, uh, we used to have a mass celebration for the workers, uh, like welcoming to okay. a new year of uh, labor. Yeah. And uh, as a representation, some of them uh, make uh, we had a procession, and in the procession they were carrying uh, maybe a, a shovel, a tool, or so, something, and, it, and they were blessed 
uh, that blessing for the whole year so they could have uh, luck getting jobs because mm -hmm. sometimes it was hard to for them to go one day to the corner and wait there for yeah. somebody to pick uh, the map to go to work. Mm -hmm. So it was like a blessing for the whole year. And it was a nice uh, tradition. Anyway, from that the celebration, we went to Mother's Day or Children's Day in April, mm -hmm. the end of April, Mother's Day, and then Independence Day. All the celebrations were uh, organized by the choir. And That's we, incredible. After Mass, we used to have volleyball games for the community to, you know, come and challenge the other team <laughs> and all this. So it was a, a very good, uh, good uh, community there. Yeah. And... I and like Susanna said, uh, we were able to connect uh, people with people. For example, and this happens very often still. Like somebody, I don't have a job, and oh, I know somebody who needs a babysitter, or I know somebody who needs a, a waiter or something. Mm -hmm. So that helped a lot too. Victor used to do um, lots of furniture trading as well, like for new um, comers to the. Uh, area, mm -hmm. he will. A lot of people knew him from church. He was very well known, but because of that, a lot of people used to come with, to him and say, like, you know what, my brother just got here, and we need a bed, and we need this, and we mm -hmm. need that, and he will just like ask around the community, and there you go, furniture, would furniture come. for this, a bed for that, a dresser for the other <laughs> one. And I remember like trips and trips of furniture all over the place. <laughs> And a lot of people wanted to donate yeah. furniture and different things for, for whoever needed. Sometimes it's not uh, that hard to, to help. Yeah. For example, where we live, there's a they call it junk day mm -hmm. on Fridays. So Thursday Thursday night, if you drive around, you can see a lot of uh, furniture on really? the curb. So if we know somebody needs a table or something. We just drive around, and sometimes it's right there. So just <laughs> put it in the van, yeah. and that's why I always have a van. <laughs> so, and, uh, and it's easy just to know, to be connected. Yeah. And somebody needs this right there. Like for somebody that wants to help, if there is people behind them to support them, they will do a lot. And you don't have to do it, do it. Just have to be willing to be the connection. And... I think that's, that's, for me, the most important part of it. Like, if you're willing to be that connection, you can do a lot of things, because here are the services, and here is the need. Here is the people willing to, and here is the need again. Just connect that. It's not like it's going to take you all the time. It's not like you're going to do it. It's be the connecting part. Be the connection. The people from other places can be connected uh, with us uh, and helping first by praying yeah. and then uh, maybe communicating um, some messages, some encouragement to the students. That's awesome. Thank you guys so, so much for coming and talking to us about everything that you do and and what people can do to help these people because... They're really important. This has been Everyday Spirituality from Connect.Faith. You can follow Connect.Faith on Facebook and Instagram, and you can find out more on our website, Connect.Faith.